Can anybody tell me anything, just, just briefly, quickly, about uh, Leonard Bernstein? Uh, it's something, a fact, fun fact about Leonard Bernstein. Yeah. What's that? Yeah, great. So, mostly known for his theater. Very, very true. And unfortunately, we can preface that with unfortunately mostly known for his theater, because he was not only a fantastic uh, composer for the theater and for his theatrical and musical theater works, but also a fantastic and prolific composer for uh, operettas, symphonies, and he was also a fantastic teacher. And I thought that it would be, uh, it's a perfect subject to speak about in this class because I know that a lot of people in here are, uh, you know, you're, you're pursuing your degrees maybe in music education or composition. So he kind of, uh, all three of those intersect with him. He was a virtuoso pianist, he was a world class composer, and he was a fantastic teacher that actually embarked and launched the Omnibus. Uh, television series and the Young People's Concerts, which are still going on today, okay, which is sponsored by the New York Philharmonic. So he he wore uh, you know, he kind of wore a lot of different hats, uh, and he wore them all very 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 well. And uh, that's a really an important thing to know to really intimately know what you know what the composer is up against and what he did. I mean, West Side Story, right? Everybody knows West Side Story. So so there you go. So we can break the ice a little bit with West Side Story which, believe it or not, is extremely significant and plays a pretty big role in what you're singing. It's, it's, it's kind of strange that you would say to yourself, well, I, I, don't, I don't understand. West Side Story doesn't sound anything like Chichester Psalms. If you dig a little deeper, I bet you find out that it does. I bet you find out that it does. He also lost a very, very uh, a fantastic collaborator um, and a friend was murdered that very, very year. So he was in a really, really dark place. And one of the symphonies that he was just finishing up was called Kaddish, which was actually a, a tribute. And it was really about despair and sorrow. And that was really a dedication of a veritable love note almost um, to, to, to uh, the, the assassination of JFK. So he was just coming off the heels of that. So he wasn't really in a good place. And then all of a sudden, you know, these are the things that move you from A to B and, and, and move us, move us forward, and narrate us forward as composers, narrate us forward as musicians. He was approached by the dean of the actually of the uh, cathedral of Chichester. So let, let's get let's talk about it. Chichester is an actual cathedral. All right, it's in Sussex, uh, England, which is all the way south on the, on the coast, southeastern England. So you know, now you gotta put a place to this, all right? You gotta, what a cool aspect. The dean of, of, of the Chichester Chapel commissioned Bernstein. So you know, he called him up and he said, listen, we, we need a work, we need a Bernstein work. But you would think that the dean of a chapel, this is a chapel, so you're talking about Catholicism, you're, you're talking about the Catholic religion. So keep in mind, Leonard Bernstein, 100% of Russian Ukrainian uh, Jewish descent, now all of a sudden going to intersect and write a piece for uh, uh, you know Catholicism in and of that. You say to yourself, well, how, what, how does this work out? But this is, is a really terrific uh, wink and a nod towards how progressive this particular dean of this chapel was. He was known for being very, very artistically progressive and artistically forward. The windows of the chapel and of the cathedral were uh, stainless the stained glass was painted by the famous uh, painter Marc Chagall. There, there were all of these things that he had commissioned all these works. So he commissioned Bernstein, he said, listen, I don't know if he said, listen, I'm paraphrasing now. <laughs> you know, he did say, he said, we need, we want a piece from you. And he loved the theatricality. He loved the musical theater works that Bernstein said. He said, well, we want Bernstein, we want that. We want that whimsical, that playful musical theater style. That's what we want. But we want it to be sincere, and we want it to be meaningful, and we want the text to be meaningful as well. And he had material. So, okay, well, all right, I, I have this material. You know, we all recycle our material. We all have stuff that we use, like, oh, I'm gonna use it for this tune. But then all of a sudden down the road, you say, wait a minute, I have that tune I have. This would be perfect for that. It happens on that high level too, you know. It happens on that ultra high level as well. So he had this this music from the skin of our teeth that he was working. And he said, "All right, this this might this might work. Okay, this might work." And then he had extra superfluous material that he had used 
for West Side Story that just didn't make it to West Side Story. So he had, he, all of a sudden, you know, he's, he's got all this material, this, this bag of tricks kind of to play from. So, okay, all right. It all comes and derives from the text. Psalm 108 is that first, first, which you're singing, this big triumphant. All of a sudden, you come in, you have this tremendous, tremendous triumphantly introduced, big, huge, grandiose introduction. The, the thematic material. There are a bunch of things that have happened. So now you have Judeo, Judeo text. This, this text. But the music isn't that straightforward. The theme and the motif of the music, you have the interval of a minor seventh. Alright? Which, if you're a West Side Story fan and you're a Bernstein fan, you know that this interval, the motif, is used over and over again, the minor seventh. So the seventh plays a really big role. Plus, the meter, 7-4, okay? So you're constantly seeing the number seven. And you're thinking, well, he's just writing this in seven. No, some of those leftover themes that were minor seven were left over from West Side Story, which is just cool in and of itself, okay? It's something in, in this Hebrew numerology called gematria, and it's, 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 it's computing the numeric value of words. So the number seven, <coughs> In Hebrew, is so significant because it creates it's, it represents goodness, creation, peace, love. Okay, at that particular time, Israel was virtually a young country, so it was a tribute to them as well. So he was using all of these things. Now, how does this intersect with Catholicism or Christian uh, Judeo the Judeo Christian line? How does this intersect? How do they relate? Well, you're using all of this text and this concept from Hebrew music. However, the ideas, the musical ideas, use something called leitmotif music, or something as imitation. Okay, leitmotif music, you all know it. It's a musical codification system. Anybody ever seen Jaws before? Right. See the shark? Right. Every time you see the shark, you hear that, that ostinato or those, that, that uh, double bass line? That's leitmotif music. That's used. So you will have these repeating themes over and over again. And then all of a sudden, in the second movement, it's what? You come from 100%, 100%, 100% to down. May I ask, how are you doing the second movement? Yes. Oh, yes. Okay. <laughs> Another fact, you hear that, that high, floating, very, very lulling solo. It's written for male. For male only. Or either counter, uh, counter tenor or high tenor, but for male only, it was written for. If you listen, it has these jazzy elements. So the dean, he says, listen, I don't, you can't just give, we want Bernstein, we want that jazziness, we want that, you know, we want that whimsical, fun, playful type of uh, musical theater fit. And you have that in the melodies, but what you, you also arrive at this, all of a sudden, there's this incredible dissonance, okay, the string dissonance and the string themes as well, and it, and it all kind of lands in this one place. So it is the perfect culmination and intersection of Judeo-Christian music and literature. And it, it, in the end, it wound up being, you know, it's, it's a masterpiece after such. But the genesis of how it got there it's never one person, ladies and gentlemen. It's never one person. It's the genesis of this whole entire thing. The magic is the magic of it. Not just the music. The music is just the end result. You know, that's what you can see and what you can touch. It's the things that aren't tangible, the things that you can't see and you can't touch. They're really what what make that thing, what makes it so special. It was the journey to that. A progressive dean in England leads to material, superfluous material from. Actually, we hear from West Side Story, pieced together with a powerful, powerful message of peace and joy. Hebrew text combined with um, Christian, traditional Christian um, choir and traditional Christian music techniques, and it all kind of journeys in into this one piece and the journey to the world. So, I'm very, very much looking forward to seeing you perform. I wish you all the best of luck. Thank you so much for listening to me today. I will see you guys uh, soon in the future. Thank you.